So I just got done watching the amazing event that was UFC 286. It was a crazy card from top to bottom. And when I say a lot of crazy happened during this card. From Mohamed Mikhaev not tapping to that knee bar and then getting the sub himself with 30 seconds left in the fight. Prayers out to Mikhaev, by the way. That was insane. He definitely gained a fan in me that night, even though I already liked him. I love him now. That was insane. To Sam Patterson getting brutally KO'd to the point where he was wrestling Mark Goddard for a couple of minutes after the knockout. That was one of the craziest knockouts I've seen in a recent good bit. To the main card where Justin Gaethje showed his mid-fight adjustment ability and his upset win over Raphael Fiziev. Incredible performance from Justin. And then finally, Leon Edwards completing the task of beating who many were calling the GOAT, Kamaru Usman, for a second straight time to prove that the head kick, head shot dead, was not a fluke. Set to kick off the whole card that would be 286, the Ultimate Fighter winner Juliana Miller was making the walk for her second UFC fight and just her fifth professional fight in her young career. And she would be taking on formerly known as Veronica Mercedo, but now known as Veronica Hardy, which is way easier to say. Unlike Miller, Hardy didn't have as much hype going into this fight, as her most recent performance before this one was over three years ago, in March of 2020, where she lost the decision to Bea Malecki. So, Miller, who was coming off a win in the Ultimate Fighter finale with the TKO over Brogan Walker, that, along with the physical advantages Miller should have had such as height and reach that helps us come to the conclusion of why the odds were where they were at least a little bit but nobody could have expected either fighter to perform the way that they did this night Hardy looked like the three years off and the help from her husband Dan Hardy made her a completely new fighter she looked amazing she looked beautiful. That head kick she had on Juliana was flush and picture perfect. I don't want to take anything away from Veronica. She had an amazing performance this night. And I'm looking forward to seeing her next fight. She proved every critic wrong about what her problems used to be with her cardio, her striking. Her jujitsu was always good. But, but now let's talk about Juliana Miller. At the weigh-ins, I thought she looked more like, eh, it was... She was way more peaceful than she was when she took on Brogan Walker. That raised the first question for me, like, huh. But she looked like she had something to prove in her last fight against Walker the whole time. During the weigh-ins, during the pre-fight intros, the walkout, she looked so motivated against Walker. While in this fight, she looked like a deer in headlights. Not only did she not look like she knew where she was during the start of the fight, or even, I guess, during the fight as a whole, she was making questionable decisions the whole fight, such as just lunging forward during the striking exchanges, so she would go right into Veronica's jab all night, and she wouldn't even land any of her own strikes. And she just showed no technique whatsoever in the striking. And then even more confusing, every time the fight touched the mat, Juliana looked like she was just trying to grab an arm or a leg and pull it. Whether it was a submission attempt or not, she was just trying to grab the body part and pull. Which most of them ended up not being submission attempts big surprise. I'm no grappling expert like the GOAT Ryan Hall is, but I know what she was doing was not right. It didn't threaten Veronica at all. It was very confusing. I don't know what she was doing. But Juliana, it looked like her first fight ever. And she just looked overall clueless. It left everyone watching just as confused as to where the aggressive Juliana from her previous fight was during this one. And who in the world is the girl who stepped out there to fight that night? Because that was not Juliana Miller. But that is not the only time something like this has happened before in UFC. It's actually very weird how similar this this is to another occurrence that happened a couple months ago, which we will talk about now. I said they were weirdly similar, and that's because Ricky Tercios, just like Juliana Miller, was the Ultimate Fighter champion, and then his weird and wacky performance came the very next fight after the Ultimate Fighter finale, just like Miller. And another similarity between the two is that they were big favorites to win. Now granted, Ricky wasn't as big of a favorite as Juliana, but they were still considered very likely to win. 
being over minus 200 and all. Now, that alone doesn't mean that the performance was weird, but even before watching this fight, going into it, we all know Ricky Tercios is a character. You never quite know what he's gonna say or do. And it just so happens that when he fought against the hobby, he did absolutely nothing. He wasn't the same aggressive brawler and grappler that everyone said he was that gave us a war in the tough finale against Brady Highstand. He was actually the complete opposite in his fight with Zahabi. He was throwing what looked like practice punches the whole fight and that's why his striking percentage was an abysmal 11%, which is the fourth worst all time in fights that have at least 150 strikes or more. So that's horrible because Zahabi is not known for his defense or anything like that. And Zahabi won this fight just because he was landing his strikes. There wasn't any power behind Zahabi's strikes. There wasn't any crazy moment in this fight where Ricky got like knocked down or anything. The whole thing was just Ricky running around like a weirdo, making us question what's going on here. But both of these fighters are characters with questions about them. These performances did not do them any favors whatsoever. Ricky managed to bounce back after this performance actually with a decision win over Kevin Natividad where he landed 179 strikes on 59% accuracy. So it seems like that was just a one-off for Ricky, hopefully. And hopefully it's just a one-off for Juliana Miller and she bounces back in her next fight. But we'll have to wait and see since her fight literally just happened. That's about it for the video today guys. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this and maybe even a part two and i'll listen to what you guys say down there in the comments below yeah you guys know what to do by now leave a like subscribe it really helps me out it motivates me and it improves the channel every single subscriber every single like it helps a lot more than you guys know and yeah that's pretty much it thank you guys for the support i'll see you all in the next video